just want to give you a quick update on uh, my East Texas hunting. Um, I'm actually out in the blind this morning. It's getting a little bit later. And uh, I've got this place in East Texas where I've been having uh, these big bucks coming. <laughs> Droopy and, and some others that I named. I haven't seen the big, tall, tiny one from last year. But uh, I have seen Droopy. Droopy's no longer a uh, four drop tine buck. He's only got one drop tine this year. But anyways, I've been sitting out here in the mornings before I go to work. This place is pretty close to my work where I can uh, actually come and sit for a couple of hours in the morning early, early. And then um, I've also decided this year I'm gonna hunt some public land pretty close to here to where I live in Houston in Sam Houston National Forest. I was actually out for the first time yesterday. First time yesterday out hunting and uh, climbed up in a tree. Actually showed up at a spot I had, uh, had uh, um, scouted out and I ended up at a place where I had scouted out and climbed, started climbing the tree and a guy had come that's public land for you but a guy with his headlamp came walking by while I'm climbing up in the tree we chatted he was a nice guy but uh, and then he parked himself he said I'm looking for my ribbon where I had my spot parked out and he ends up 50 yards away from me down uh, down uh, from my tree so uh, well, come lunchtime, I end up climbing down and going and finding another spot that actually had some good sign there. But I saw two doe coming out um, in the morning, and then I went and ate lunch and went to this other place in the evening and uh, saw one deer. I think it was a buck, but it's about 100 yards away, and he disappeared in the brush. That's East Texas hunting for you. But anyways, we'll, uh, we'll bring you whatever we got uh, in East Texas. Just wanted to give you that quick update. Red is the color of the trail of success for the hunter who has put in the time and effort to make it happen. And red is the color of grace for the Savior who suffered and died in our place so we could be forgiven. before uh, shooting lights up, I think four and a half hours, something like that. But I'm in a different tree. Wind has switched on me. It was going a northerly wind coming this way. Um, whenever I uh, actually, northwestern wind moving that way. I was on the other side of the creek. Now it's moving south and east, almost the opposite direction. So I had to switch trees, get on this side of the creek. There's a pinch point right in this, below that pond that I was at this morning. I'm about 150 yards down past that, about a quarter mile off the highway. And uh, there's a pinch point coming through this where this creek is, right where that pond meets. So I can shoot both directions, but this wind's really squirrely right now. It was blowing kind of northerly, now it seems to be blowing back that way. <laughs> this wind is so squirrely. Anyways, we're going to sit tight. Hopefully we uh, see something because it's been two sits. I've only seen one deer in the stand. Two doe going out. I couldn't tell what the other deer was last week when I was out here hunting. So, uh, Thanks for watching Indian Creek Ball Hunting Journal. Even though we're in East Texas, this is still the Indian Creek Ball Hunting Journal. So pigs are not my favorite to hunt, but anytime a pig comes along, I'm going to take my opportunity these pigs showed up about 60 yards away and started working their way through the trees. I was actually thinking that they weren't going to come, but 
to my surprise, they came through this pinch point right along the edge of the creek, and I had one coming at about 25 yards, and then this other one that's further away in the background there, he started uh, coming and ended up about 30 yards away, and I was going to wait for this uh, pig at about 22 to 23 yards come in front of me so that uh, I could just have a chip shot. So watch what takes place here. I obviously made the mistake of not shooting that one at 30 yards behind the log, but now I'm scrambling to try to shoot at something. So watch this. Okay, that was stupid. <laughs> I think those pigs are still right over there. They're out of range, probably 60 yards in heavy brush. But that was stupid. I, I should have taken that shot at that pig. He was 30 yards, but I thought this one was 25 yards. He was going to keep walking through, but he turned around. He turned around and walked straight away. Man. I should have taken that shot at 30 yards ahead. That was stupid. Well, <laughs> that's kind of cool. At least I saw something today. Been sitting all day, and that's the first time I've seen anything out here in the National Forest. So, in the heat of the moment, I guessed this pig to be 40 yards. So I put my 40 yard pin on him and let her fly, but I, I ranged it after the fact and he was 47 yards. And you could see how close that arrow came, what a nailed him, but that's the breaks when you're in the heat of the moment trying to guess yardage without being able to use your range finder. We are back in the blind tonight. Got, uh, it's about two o'clock, shortly thereafter probably. And I've uh, actually brought some pumpkins to sit out there and we'll see if the deer like to eat pumpkins. We'll see what happens, but um, had a sit this morning and had uh, a lot of dough. Had one little spike that was pushing some of the dough and I could have shot one of those deer at about 50 yards, but it never turned and gave me a broadside shot. Uh, one of the dough anyways, and then I could have shot another doe at about 65 yards. And uh, I figured, eh, let's wait. Don't need to be shooting that far right now. But uh, come tonight or tomorrow morning, if I get one within 50 yards, 60 yards, I'm going to take a shot. But I think they're going to come all the way in. I switched spots. I was at the cabin blind. I was at the cabin blind this morning because I thought that's where the deer were coming. But actually, this place right here, my my. My camera ran out of battery about uh, six days ago, and so I don't have any camera um, activity from six days ago up till six days ago. But the the axis deer have been heavily coming here to this feeder, so maybe I'll get one of those down tonight. Got doe coming as well. Also, a mature buck has been coming here too, but at night, mainly at night. So. There's one daylight camera I got of him that was in the early, early morning, I believe it was. So 
want to sit back and relax. Maybe we'll get some down right here tonight. So it was nice and chilly, so I decided to get into the blind early, and uh, I did didn't really see any deer activity until later in the evening. Uh, this doe actually came in, so I was uh, determined I was going to take this doe. All right, last blood right here, guys. On this little spot there, I don't know if you can see it there. There's some more back here. She's coming this way. I think she's gonna run through those trees right there. Let's see if we can find any up here. All right, I got an Axis buck screaming in the background. <laughs> but, uh, I see the arrow right there. Oh, there she is right there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well guys, a fox got to her hind end. So, nothing left of her hind end. But, at least I found her. We're gonna get her tagged and taken care of here. And then, uh, well at least the back straps are good. Front end's good, so. We'll take care of her and uh, thanks for watching Indian Creek Bow Hunting Journal.